In this video, we're going to touch a little bit more on the idea of the shape of an array and how that relates to broadcasting and how we can reshape arrays other than just flattening them. Okay, so we're going to go back to our original array here. It's being made a set of random numbers between 1 and 100, and the size is 5 rows and 10 columns. Okay, we see the resulting array here. Well, this array can be reshaped in a variety of ways as long as the elements uh, evenly reshape, right? So here, because if I was to add up all the elements and flatten them, there'd be 50 of them. Well, then I could reshape it in ways where I could go 10 by 5 or anything that divides into 50 equally, right? So let's just play with that. If I reshape this. Okay, rather than it being 5 by 10, we could go 10 by 5, right? And so now we'll have 10 rows, 5 columns, okay? Or we can think about 50 being divided uh, 25 by 2, right? So now we have 25 rows, 2 columns, or 2 rows with 25 columns, right? And you get the idea. This is fine. But if I was to take this array and reshape it, you know, four by three, of course, we know that's not going to work. And we'll get this type of message, cannot reshape array of size 50 into this other shape. And, you know, understanding this is critically important to working with NumPy because matching shapes count, not just for resizing, but for what also is called broadcasting. Okay, now, I'm going to uh, start over here. So let me just, we'll do um, an empty cell here. So I'm going to make a second array. I'm going to call this my adder. I'm going to use an array to do some addition. Okay, now we've seen addition before. If I think of vectorization, right, here's my array. And then I say uh, my array, you know, plus 10, you know, then what's happening uh, if I spell this right, is that every element in the two-dimensional structure will be bumped up by 10, right? This is the idea of being able to traverse through each element of the array quickly to do mathematical operations, right? And we, so we think of this as one simple example of vectorization, no iteration needed, and yet we can affect all the elements in the array itself. Okay, well, we can also do addition, not just with scalar values, but also with other uh, array structures. Okay, so I'm going to make this my adder uh, array. Okay, and we'll call NumPy's random int method again. Okay, and okay, this one, we're going to have a low, we'll just do a low adder here. So I'm going to go start at one, the high will be equal to three. And OK, let's set the size equal to 5 by 1. All right, and I'll go from there. All right, and here we take my adder. We can take a look at its structure, right? So here we have 5 by 1, 5 rows, 1 column. OK, this is a two-dimensional structure um, with one column, 5 rows. See, this is a shape that can work um, doing mathematical operations on the other array, right? The concept of broadcasting is at play when we do this. Okay, and I'll show you just the result. I can take, uh, if I just go my r plus the my adder, and if we run this, we do get a new array out of the existing one. But notice, you know, uh, the first element here is bumped up by one. We look at the third one down, 76, we see that's bumped up by two. Okay, but notice the trend happens right across the way for the entire array, not just one column. The idea of broadcasting is this, as long as the shape of an array that's performing the mathematical operation can be stretched in either direction, it will do so, right? So if we look at this uh, five row, one column structure, it's being stretched across so that, you know, if we think about this, then this, then this, it's basically repeating this across 
uh, 10 times, right? So that we get this similar pattern happening across the entire array. If I was to reshape this and make this a one by five, well, now we, we're going to have trouble here because notice that my shape now is one row, five columns. This can't be stretched across, right? Because I have uh, 10 columns, five rows, right? It can't be stretched down because it won't cover the entire array either. And so then when I try to do my mathematical operation, we say that they cannot be broadcast together. The shapes don't work. OK, so this is what I mean by it's critical to understand shaping, not just to reshape an array so that it works out, but also when we do mathematical operations. OK, uh, let's prove this point again. I'm going to make a different structure, something a little smaller. OK, so let's make this four by four. OK, there we go, a little easier to work with. Now, if I was to make uh, an adder, some other array that I could do addition on, uh, you know, this one by five structure again could not be broadcast, right? We're going to get the same error message, right? Because this is too large to stretch across or down, right? Now notice if I make this two by two, take a look at that structure. Okay, here we go. Well, we look at this. Um, it This actually will prevent problems too, right? This still can't be stretched down or across, but four by one might. Okay, so here we have, we can go and stretch across. And in this case, it'll add two to every element. It's going to move across this way and repeat. And we could also do the same if we make it one by four. Notice now this will align with our number of columns. And so now it can stretch this shape or repeat it, make it larger four times down, right? And so now we can do our addition. And we can see that work as well. Now, of course, this is kind of broadcasting and vectorization at play, right? Broadcasting, stretching one shape to fit another, you know, for performing our mathematical calculations and vectorization because we're affecting this array without any explicit iteration, right? Now, of course, because it's broadcasting and uh, we have a viable shape here, we could do any mathematical operation on, you know, that we want. We can do uh, division, right? And come across that, and we can do modulus, all right? So you see how powerful NumPy is. All these things, all these map operations that we're doing so far on our array structures, no iteration at all, no list comprehension, purely done with vectorization and broadcasting. OK, now if you think that's neat, we'll come back and we're going to look at a few other things, things like slicing and masking that also make these very powerful data structures.